Hello and welcome to this session of exception handling in Python. Today we are going to discuss how exception handling is done in Python. This concept is not new in any programming language. It is pretty prevalent in Java and other programming languages and so it's on the same lines how we can do exception handling in Python. So let's take a look what are the nuances and what are the syntaxes for exception handling in Python. So what are we going to discuss today? We are going to start with discussion of need of exception handling. What is exception handling? The types of errors you can handle in exception handling and how exception handling works and in the end certain points to be remembered. And also we will support our slides with a Python Jupyter notebook examples. Now what is the need for exception handling? Any programming language or any program you write, there is definitely a need in order to have a clean execution of the program even if the program throws errors. So you need exception handling for cleanly logging the exceptions or throwing meaningful errors to the users. So when does exception occurs, right? Whenever the program gets terminated, right? The program terminates whenever an error occurs, right? So it could happen that an error could be a fatal error and the program gets terminated in between. Or there could be a sudden termination which can corrupt the program, right? So you need to handle exceptions. Or there might be, there might be a data loss because of those exceptions and you need to take care that that doesn't occur or the data loss does not happen. Or even if data loss happens, then you pass on a meaningful message or you uh, capture a meaningful message in the logs at the right point. Now what is exception handling? An exception is a runtime error that terminates the execution of a program. So basically whenever an exception occurs, the program gets terminated, you are thrown out of the running program. Exception handling means you generate a message in correspondence to the occurrence of the error and take the right step to handle it. So now an exception has occurred but you need to handle it. Now by handling we mean that you need to throw a meaningful message as I said earlier and then you might need to navigate the program into the right direction or take some certain corrective actions uh, in order to handle the error. So all that comes under the exception handling criteria. Now in general, there are three types of errors, compile time errors, logical errors and runtime errors. Now compile time errors are the errors which any programming compiler or Python compiler will show you while you are compiling your program. So it could be because of the syntax, spacing, uh, indentation, or you would you you are using wrong keywords all those will get captured at the compile time logical errors uh, you know you have not used the correct syntax around logical operators like and or 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 your if else conditions are incorrect and you are expecting an output uh, but it is not coming as per your expectations so those are logical errors and the most difficult ones to capture and track uh, and handle are the runtime errors so imagine your program is compiled and as per your expectation, uh, you are expecting an output, you have uh, you know written a logic, but at the runtime, it does not get executed, it does not run as per your expectation and the program gets terminated unexpectedly. So the, the runtime errors are the most critical and important in order to handle them. And if you talk about uh, runtime errors handling in production scenarios, then it becomes very critical that you have handled the exceptions correctly and captured the logs correctly so that the support to team can point out uh, where the error has exactly happened. Now how exception handling works? There are certain syntaxes uh, in Python which you need to follow. Now you generally put the uh, uh, exception handling code, the code for which you, you want to handle the exception under a try block. 
So you run that piece of code under a try block and then you put an accept keyword where you basically throw an error message and then if there is no exception right then also you can handle the code okay if there is no exception in my code then how the code will behave yeah right so it could be possible that there is a runtime error but if there is no then you might want to do some logical uh, calculations or you want to put something over there you can put in the else block and then finally now finally is a code block which will always get executed irrespective of you had an exception in your code or not so basically generally uh, if you go by the legacy programming uh, if you have opened a database connection uh, or if you have opened a file and you it is essential to close those connections uh, from your program then those close connection uh, code are written generally in the finally block irrespective of the exception uh, exception coming you need to close those connections otherwise you will run out of your connection pools now it's a pretty straightforward uh, flowchart of an exception and handling you start with a try block and then if an exception occurs in your code then it will go to the accept block otherwise it will go in the else section and then finally you have the finally block where the code will finally get executed and stop so as i said you put that piece of code in the finally block which is mandatory and generally the block uh, the code which is essential to release the resources which the program has consumed uh, the cpu resources the memory resources hardware resources which the program is using you have to release that in the finally block except block you have to use for capturing the error uh, and throw a meaningful message or do any other logical operation and else block if you want to continue your program as is now what are the points to remember we, these are very important uh, points which you should consider you can write a try block without any except block so it's not essential that you put a except block always or you can write several except blocks for a single try you might be expecting a null pointer exception or a divide by zero exception or a incorrect variable naming exception so you can start off with one try but you can have different except blocks to capture these different kind of exceptions and throw a relevant meaningful error per except block also you can write multiple except blocks to handle multiple exceptions it's almost the same thing and you can write exception as an object you can also uh, print or capture an exception as an object or you can write multiple exceptions within a tuple you can capture the multiple exceptions add it to a tuple and throw it away okay so now let's take a look at uh, certain examples which we want to run in order for better understanding of exception handling now throughout my exercise i am going to focus on divide by zero error which we are able, easily able to simulate so i am going to mostly show you how we can capture a divide by zero error okay so i have declared a variable a and i have declared a variable b uh, a as 10 b as 0 now i am trying to divide a by b now i am trying to divide a number with 0 so ideally yes this is not a correct mathematical operation divide by number 0 uh, is not allowed so i should get a zero division error now this is an unhandled exception my program has not handled it properly so that's why you are get, getting this error on the uh, trace of the python trace but if i handle it properly then i can very cleanly throw this error and capture this error okay so i am going to take input in b enter a and b and i am just going to print a generic except block so 10 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 
and I have got an exception and I've printed it. Now there is no stack trace, there is no trace, but at least I'm able to cleanly throw an error, a meaningful error. Now, again, I'm differently going to handle the exception. I'm going to uh, create the same exception, but going to handle it differently. Now there's a try block. Now I am writing an except block to capture the specific exception, zero division error exception. In the earlier code block, I had just written except, so any exception would have come to this block. But in this except block, only zero division error will be captured. So as you can see, uh, I cleanly uh, handled the exception. Of course, I gave the name except zero division error, and then my code got executed later on. Now, in another example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that if my code runs cleanly, then it's not necessary my except block will get executed definitely because if there is no error, then the except block will remain redundant. Now here you see what I have done is I have taken genuine two numbers, di divided them, printed a new line and then completed. So as there was no exception, the exception block did not got executed. So the point to be highlighted over here is that it is not essential that you know an exception block will get executed always. It will only come into picture when there is a relevant exception getting uh, getting generated. Now let's take an example of how we can print an exception object. So I'm going to take my previous code and here I am capturing the exception but also printing the exception object. So what has happened is I have printed the exception of a message, a custom message, plus I have printed the exception object. Okay. Now I'm going to take the same example, but I'm not going to generate an exception. So my exception block did not got executed and I was able to simply print simply learn. Now let's take another example. Where I am capturing my exception in an, in a variable. So do not divide number by zero and in this ex I have captured my exception division by zero. So in the exception, the Python generated exception name is this and I have printed over here. So division by zero is the Python generated exception which I have appended in my print command. Now I am going to take another example where I'm saying is that I will print exception as a plus I'm going to also capture another exception. So it's like one try and two exceptions. So one exception is do not divide number by zero. And second exception is 
name z is not defined right so i'm so as i said earlier you can have one try but to accept blocks which is permissible now one thing is that you know you this exception print a by z came uh, went through both the accept blocks except this exception and this exception though this exception is not divided by zero error so therefore therefore in this a variable nothing came in but in the b variable the name error was definitely captured because it's a name undefined z, name z is not defined error and that's why you can see that do not divide number by zero up after that we do not have any relevant meaningful message okay now let's take another example where we are going to have two except blocks and out of these two only one will get executed okay so there is no type error exception so that except block did not got executed but only zero division error is there so only that got printed now you can explicitly also raise an exception it's not like you just have to wait for a runtime exception you can also raise your ex raise an exception from your code and execute it so if you see this what we have done is just created a variable with a negative value and just checking that if the value is less than zero then raise an exception so that's what we have done similarly you can also throw raise an assertion error which it is called assert and you can run this uh, uh, message you can throw this message compatible with linux only so i hope you guys had a great learning session and i look forward to connecting with you in my next session thank you hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here